serious, night owls of reddit, what is the creepiest thing that happened to you when everyone else was sleeping? I recall a few months ago I was on my 3DS, when I heard my little 7 year old brother calling my name. This wasn't uncommon, as he used to stay up a lot on his iPod watching YouTube, and had questions for so and so thing in game, so I put on a shirt and went to check on him. He was laying on the couch under his blanket, his phone still playing Minecraft videos when he looked at me and asked me to check his room for the knocking. I'm usually paranoid about this stuff happening anyway, so I went to look and turned on his light. As I glance at the window I saw a kid, not a man, a kid, maybe 11 or 12 years old just sitting there, smiling, looking like he just had the best day ever before running off. I ran to my brother and just scooped him up and took him to my parents room to explain what happened, but they didn't believe me. I later learned that the neighbor's kid had been sneaking out at night to play with some other neighborhood kids and wanted to play a prank. Wow, I actually wasn't expecting that ending. So, I was at my grandmother's house in the Mississippi countryside. I didn't know it at the time, but my grandma's neighbor has pet peacocks. The thing about peacocks is that when they squawk, it sounds like a human being, desperately crying for help. Imagine being me, out on my grandma's porch swing, at 2am, hearing continuous human sounding cries for help. I was terrified. That, and mountain lion screams are what terrify me about nature. I was working from home, third shift, and about 2am. I heard the stuff on the coat rack in the living room rattle like it does when the door opens. I thought it might be my cat climbing on the coats, and went to get her down, and found not a cat climbing things she knows she's not allowed on, but a person, I didn't know standing in the middle of my living room. He demanded to know where his stuff was, and after me insisting for about 5 minutes I had no clue who the duck he was, he threatened me. My phone was in my room and I wasn't willing to turn my back on this guy, so I reached for the katana my mother had gotten me for my birthday, sitting against the wall behind me. I got to chase a man out of my apartment, with an actual sword. Unfortunately, the whole experience freaked me out so bad that now I keep the sword next to my bed in case of noises in the night. I also lock the door. So I was home alone at 2am as my parents were out at a yearly company event which always drags out into the wee hours of the morning, and I was cleaning my house as a surprise for my parents so they'd come home to a spotless house. They've worked hard, they've earned their night out and I was honestly enjoying myself as I had my tunes on and was lost in thought. All the lights were on so even though it was night, there wasn't no dark spooky corner to make me feel uncomfortable. This is important for later. As I'm cleaning, I think I hear a door creaking. I shut off the music and sure enough, I hear creaking again. I go out into the hallway and it's the door to my sister's room creaking open. The light in her room is off, which I immediately found out as I hadn't even gone into her room since it didn't need any cleaning. I figured the light was always off or maybe I forgot having shut it off. There wasn't much in the way of wind but the doors have been known to open and close sometimes on their own. Offhandedly, I say aloud. Hey, could you close the door? I'd appreciate it, the door begins to creak closed, which at first started giving me the chills, but I dismissed it thinking I must have just timed my words to when it would start creaking closed. So I added on. Actually, it's cool you can keep it open. It started opening up again, creaking ever so slowly. I was starting to get creeped out so I decided to just walk past and ignore it, chalk it up to my imagination getting the better of me. I didn't feel like putting my tunes back on so as I cleaned, I kept hearing the door creaking again and again. And every time it was just the door to my sister's room. Starting to get tired and almost sure it was just the wind or something, I passed by it and saw it more open than before, and pitch black inside. I didn't stick around to look inside and just commented in an offhand tone. Just close the door already, cool thanks ghosts, slam. I nearly jumped out of my ducking skin and immediately turned around to see the door to my sister's room close shut. My eyes were wide and my heart was racing. Everything was so silent and calm, I had trouble believing I was so absolutely terrified. 
What scared me the most was the fact that my sister's room has a door where you need to turn the knob to fully close it, else the little metal piece which keeps the door closed makes it bounce off the frame, unless you slammed it hard enough to bypass the resistance of the metal spring in the knob. The other thing that absolutely terrified me and made me go into my room and wait for my parents to come back home, was that under the edges of the door into her room, the light was on. Listen. For my own sake I'm going to pretend this is made up. Call me weird, but sometimes when I can't sleep I get bored and get out of bed. I go to the window and look out of it for a bit. I dunno, it just kinda calms me seeing my backyard in the moonlight. I find it peaceful. Anyway, I was looking out the window when I saw a figure jump the fence. Too big to be a cat, it was human shaped. The person made the motion with their head that they were looking around frantically, then they hid behind a bush. I was petrified. For what seemed like an eternity, they stayed there. Then they ran to the other side of the backyard and jumped that fence over into my neighbors. I never knew who it was or what they were doing. I always suspected that maybe they were being chased or something. It just really freaked me out. So back when I was living way out in the countryside, I used to have to drive a good 20 minutes just to get to a county maintained road, and then another 40 minutes into the city to go to school and work. I'd go to school in the mornings and then work with a video production company filming weddings and bar mitzvahs and such. The events tended to run well past midnight, and then we'd have to break down and transport all the gear, lock up the shop, and then it'd be an hour of driving to get back to my girlfriend's family's home, way out in the ranch land. I'm driving home one night probably 2 or 3 am, exhausted and probably in need of a tall glass of water if you follow, and I get to the end of the pavement and start blasting down this tiny dirt road, in that real country dark where all you can see is a little cone of headlight. Mesquite bushes and desert grass make this sort of wall on either side of the road so it's like driving down a little shoot of scraggly little branches, and I'm coming around this corner, when up in the road is this ducked up looking, thing. I slam on the brakes and shoot this wall of dust out ahead of me, but through the dust sitting centered in the beam of my headlights is this white, hunched figure. It has long legs and haunches like a jackrabbit but it's a good 4 feet high and kinda lumpy, like an illustration from those scary stories books and I am terrified. It kinda rocks a little bit and shivers and I'm looking at this thing and it makes no sense at all the way it's shaped. I stare at it for a good minute. Just idling in the middle of this road trying to make up some kind of story to myself to explain what the hell I'm looking at, but I am completely stumped. So I start creeping the car forward, and as I'm getting close enough to see the shapes of its muscles and the shine of fur, the thing hops up, and the bit I thought looked like a head with a long ear stretches up and out, changing its whole shape like something out of the thing and I about screamed. Still nearly invisible, except for its white striped legs and underbelly, this black cow that had been sitting at the edge of the road stood up, showing part of its body that had been hidden behind a folded black leg, and staggered off into the bushes to find a spot to sleep where people weren't blasting it with high beams. I felt like an idiot later, but in that moment where it was rising up and like, unfolding itself, if I had run off before I saw what it really was, I'd be swearing to this day I saw a chupacabra or a demon or some craziness. I worked overnights at a gas station, well lit, considered it my home away from home, treated everyone nice except one person who assaulted me one time for declining her card, except I can't decline it manually so, anyway. First things first, I'm mopping the backroom area as a above and beyond thing for my boss, used to even clean the ceiling vents, like I said, home away from home, and I come out to the front counter where the cigarette drawer that has all the cartons is hanging open. I immediately think I got robbed so I lock the front doors to go in the back room to check the security footage. On the camera, the drawer opens on its own, which isn't possible since they all shut on their own if left partially open ensuring they only stay open if pulled all the way out. Feeling a bit creeped out but glad I wasn't robbed, I go to the front door which has one of those twisting locks. I grab the lock to unlock it by twisting when a loud clunk occurs, and suddenly the lock is jammed shut. I call my assistant manager to inform her, and while on the phone using all my might to unlock the lock, there's three customers outside just laughing at this gas station clerk locked inside their store. To whatever ghost that mastermind did that plan, 
damn good job, you got me good. A long while back when I was still a teen and living with my parents, I wanted to listen to some music but it was quite late. I went downstairs to the garage and decided to listen to music in my car. After a while it was quiet as I was deciding on the next CD to play when I heard what sounded like leaves crunching outside. I looked in my rear view mirror and saw a figure coming up the driveway. The motion activated floodlight on the garage did not illuminate as the figure approached the front door. I quickly and quietly head back inside and go up to the kitchen where I could get a view of the front door. It was still quite dark, but I could make out the shape of a person standing at the front door. They stood there for a moment before I hear a knock. Obviously, this is strange for a quiet neighborhood at 3am. I reach for my phone and dial the police, but after waiting for another minute that felt like an eternity, the person turned around and walked away back down the drive and into the street, being careful to avoid the only street light. Before the police had arrived, he was gone. They started to search the area but found no one. One officer came to ask questions and get a description, but it was so dark I couldn't make out anything useful. To this day, I still have no earthly clue why this happened. A couple of years ago, I was laying on the couch, watching TV with the lights low. It was around 3am. I noticed a sound from the front door and looked to see the the knob turning slowly left and right. The knob was locked, but it was still terrifying. The turning stopped after a few seconds, presumably because whoever was turning the doorknob heard the TV. However, the next day I was curious. I locked the knob and then experimented with trying to open the door from the outside, and found out that I was able to open the locked door, using the same slow left then right then back again motion that the person used the night before. My fear is that whoever was testing the door knob, may have been in the apartment before late at night, and possibly other apartments in my unit with the same crappy door knob. Make sure you have a deadbolt on your door as well, and make sure your door knob lock still works. I had no idea that the locking mechanism on door knobs could actually fail or wear out in such a way that the door knob can still be turned and opened despite being locked. I had a drunk guy walk into my house once, claiming he thought it was his. That was the only wake up call I needed, to remember to lock my door when I'm home all the time. I can kinda get it in an apartment building where every door looks the same, but this was in a unique house on a quiet street. Kinda makes me wonder. If this is a tactic used by people trying to rob places, if they get caught, pretend to be drunk and confused so they don't get the cops called. A drunk guy tried to climb in my bedroom window when I was about 10. I was terrified and yelled at him to duck off. He then started knocking on the front door, and woke up my mum. She realized he belonged to the muscles next door and told him to duck off over there. To be fair, we lived in state housing and all the houses did look the same. At about 3 in the morning, I was playing video games in my living room when my front door knob turns, but doesn't open, so I ran over to it, locked it, looked through the blinds and there was a crackhead, standing on my front patio. Edit, for those wondering why my front door was unlocked at 3am, I always lock it before bed but was still going out for the occasional smoke, also I live in Canada, 